So this video is going to have a couple cameos from various other people, some in the COD industry and some weirdo I happen to work with in some other channel. Should make it preference earlier that these people are not necessarily affiliated with me in any way. I ask for their help and expertise. They do not share my opinions. They do not share my sponsorships on various things, the whole stuff. I also spend a great deal of time just shit talking Bobby Kotick in this video and they know nothing about that, you know? So just making sure that uh, my shenanigans get spread out to other people and you know keep them all doing well their channels are in the description by the way also dk eat my ass If you were to look on the list of the most disliked videos on YouTube, you'll find a rather varied selection. Number one is the 2018 YouTube Rewind. Fortnite. Uh, many of us remember the climate on the platform at the time and the dedication to, to making it the worst one there. There's a baby shark dance video, which doesn't actually have a huge ratio, but a monumental amount of dislikes on it. There's Justin Bieber's baby, a massive collection of nursery rhymes, including wheels on the bus, Humpty Dumpty, and old McDonald had a farm. And hey, it, even Despacito is on it. Not for the ratio, of course, but just for the brute force volume of dislikes. But all the way down at number 25, is the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare reveal trailer. A video that not only had a massive amount of dislikes, but a huge percentage as well. Which, if you weren't there for this reveal or were too young to remember it, you goddamn Zoomer, it was when Call of Duty went full sci-fi space game. At the time, COD had become, or was considered to be very stale. Almost every single year, there were complaints that you were buying the exact same game again, and again. During the Modern Warfare 3 trailers, people had that exact same reaction, and that continued with Black Ops 2 and then Ghosts. I know it's ironic to say COD had become stale while we're living in 2023, but this was the general discourse and what fueled the Battlefield versus Call of Duty argument for a while. Back then, it was MW3 versus BF3, you know, the Bloods and the Crips. Which side were you on? I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. It was all relatively linear, boots on the ground style gameplay, and even going into the slight future with Black Ops 2 and Ghosts, but that wasn't enough. So then Advanced Warfare came around and said, hey, what about exosuits, high movement, change the game up in all kinds of ways? Then at wall running, at specialists, and you had Black Ops 3. Even though this is a generally liked game, turns out Call of Duty players aren't too receptive to change. That's not Call of Duty to me. And only two years in of trying something new, they began to turn on the idea. See, they wanted gray. They wanted modern. They wanted They wanted anything else that wasn't a game set in the distant future with jetpacks, robots, spaceships, and lasers. What the fuck are you thinking? Call of Duty being the biggest franchise in gaming, combined with the general resentment in the community, multiply it by the wider internet thinking disliking the video is just kind of funny, and you can see how it reached its number 25 spot. Lo and behold, I am one of the very few at the time to actually have the nuclear take that Infinite Warfare is incredibly enjoyable, fresh for the series, and solidified itself as a top three in my Call of Duty list. It's hard to beat MW2 and Black Ops 2, okay? The campaign was bombastic and epic. The multiplayer was actually really varied and the customization was off the charts. And the zombies mode was unique and something I should probably revisit for a later video. Fast forward to a few months ago where the game had a massive sale, including all the DLC and me and a good deal of my Discord bought it to have private matches. Most of them had never played it, and suffice to say, we had a much better time than a lot of them initially thought they would. All right, if any of you takes A, you're gonna- I'm gonna have a problem. He's having a problem! Yeah, he had, had a problem. problem. I warned you! <laughs> what the fuck no, happened? No, no, think about it. He thought about it. How do you throw- no. ah! 
How body. do you throw? You're you're pretty good at that. You'll figure oh, it out. Any cl if you were any closer, you'd have been. I'm, I'm the gonna. Ground. I'm, 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 I'm gonna crouch shot you. Your house, Dex. I'm gonna do it. There we go. That fucking sucks for these guns. Oh yeah, the shotgun. Yeah, it does. Shotgun, what this the fuck was that? Hi, hi, hi. Whoever's using a counter UAV, you were fucking dropped on I'm the head. Not. We did way better in this. <laughs> yeah. <they're laughs> right. yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. What? Okay. What? Oh, no. okay. What the fuck? Yo, what, what else? Shot. What else? <laughs> Thanks. This is fantastic. I love this. This game, game is incredible. It was a great couple of nights. It got me the itch to play it more. There's still a somewhat decent population on Xbox, but I wanted to do some PC gaming at my desk. So I went to go search for a match and. Hmm. Our level fast file is different from the server exclamation point, a boarding connection. That's weird. Well, let's try it again. Verify integrity of files. Uninstall and reinstall. So I did the tiniest, smallest amount of research. And a level fast file error is the game attempting to verify your account to make sure you aren't a cheater altering the game files, which does work if you are cheating, but seems to be a bug that kicks you out if you aren't. And it seems that this is happening to everybody. I found one Steam review that seems to have pretty similar thoughts to me. In all likelihood, this game is susceptible to RCE exploits like every other COD game on Steam, which you can be 100% certain Activision will never bother to fix. Also, the multiplayer is genuinely completely broken. Like, even if you were willing to brave the risk of RCEs, the multiplayer matchmaking has some level fast file issue that hasn't been fixed for over a year. It's literally impossible to start a public match. in over a year. Now, I can't necessarily confirm this situation specifically. I haven't played the multiplayer a year ago on Steam. So I asked someone with more knowledge than me. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Mike, otherwise known as Rage. Uh, I am a Call of Duty PC content creator. I have been focusing on Call of Duty on PC since 2016. I initially heard about this like a year or so ago. You literally cannot play PVP. Yep. And that solves that. But. What was that other thing the review said? RCE exploits, like every other COD on Steam. A quick Google told me an RCE exploit was something that often involved another exploit called a rat, which immediately made me think of the Halo 3 rat. What a cool guy. So I spent the next few days learning about rats. Rats, rats, we are the rats. Celebrate another one of birthday batch. Michael, it's your birthday today. Rats are actually really helpful for the environment. They hoard seeds underground and, and commonly never return to get them, allowing those seeds to bloom into new vegetation. Amazing. A R-A-T, however, is an acronym for Remote Access Trojan, and it's not good for the environment. Scientifically, it's known as a pretty dick thing to do. Now, I dropped out of college and just don't really understand computer programming or anything to do with coding. So I had a Discord member explain it to me in metaphors and somebody else read it for me. I love America. Peer-to-peer -peer connections are like building a temporary tunnel network between you and everyone else involved. The tunnel exists so you can talk to each other. The fuck you say to me, you little s You're putting trust that no one else will find the tunnel, booby trap it, or do anything sketchy with the tunnel. And you're hoping that your door is strong enough that they can't just waltz out of the tunnel and have a look around your house freely. However, you aren't monitoring that tunnel, so nefarious people could try to just Tape the jam of the door so that when you close it, it doesn't stay shut. Or maybe they get themselves a master key when you're not looking so they can come back later and take a look around. It's also possible that when they send you a message, that message is just anthrax. It's also a lot of trust in the other person and the security built in place. Really good P2P services will have you install heavily reinforced doors on 
time locks with retinal and fingerprint scans to open, and they can only open from the inside when you choose to go into the tunnels to talk to the others. They'll have cameras to watch the tunnel and either side of the entrance for anything sketchy and bouncers on either side of the door to watch who's coming, going, and give them a nice little pat down. So let's say you and I are talking to each other via the tunnel and say I'm sending you a package, but instead of a nice cake, it's a pipe bomb. Only you don't know until you open it. And I mixed it in with every other package that I send that's actually cake. You don't know what it is until it's too late. For a rat, it's more like I'd be tricking you into installing a new lock that I actually have a master key for. You are using a master lock model 176. You can open it using a master lock model 176. You think it's a new, better, more secure lock, and you trusted me when I said that. However, I have a master key to the lock in reality, so now I can come back later and walk into your house without you even knowing it. The other issue peer-to-peer -peer games have is since there's no service that validates anything, it's easy to manipulate the data you send to everyone else. So when, say, they shoot you and everyone's game checks to see if you were actually shot, your game just sends out a Nope, y'all missed. That very nope, y'all missed message also knows the person's public IP address. So it's pretty easy to fire up software and DDoS the person, effectively knocking you offline. It's also not the hardest thing in the world to turn an IP address into a physical street address and from there look a person up. These old Call of Duties on Steam have the equivalent of a collapsing tunnel and a door made of decomposing paper. Oh, also the Bouncers, they're dead. Once that lock has been changed, aka the rat has found their cheese, there is no number to the amount of things they can steal from you. System information, file information, browser usage, task manager, DDoS attacks, audio recordings, webcam recordings, hidden browser usage, and the rest of these things. This is what they initially meant by RCE in the Steam review, remote code execution. It's having an attack execute malicious code on your PC. That's not the same thing as a rat, but both of these have a similar end goal, stealing the data on your PC and messing around with it. This is particularly nasty for any kind of content creator who is interested in playing these games, mainly because once there is an audience watching them, they become an instant target for these hackers. A lot of hackers, a lot of people who mod in video games do it out of spite, like just to get a reaction out of people. And mm. I kind of feel like that's what a lot of people do, especially when they target YouTubers, streamers, content creators, because they want that attention. They want that, you know, emotionally charged, emotionally fueled uh, rage at them. There was this one random guy on Kick that had himself hacked on a live stream when playing a Black Ops 2 wager match. Luckily, all he experienced was getting booted out of the game and a, a few porn tabs being opened. A very minor minor inconvenience at best, but the implications for others aren't as light. Particularly disgruntled livestream viewers are not known for their restraint when it comes to ruining someone's livelihood. The amount of options that are at these hackers' fingertips, as we've already seen, is stark. The bigger you are, the larger of a target you become. Are you familiar with Lex, by any chance, Mr. t -Luxify? Zombies YouTuber, right? Yes, he's in the COD zombie space. I remember watching all, like, all of his videos when this stuff was really getting bad on Black Ops 3 specifically, and he had someone rat his PC PC multiple times and he was specifically being targeted super hard. He got to the point where he has to secure his PC getting one of those USB security key things. Like you have to plug it in and that's literally the only way you can verify anything on your PC. That's how bad it got. Holy hell. So like that's that's the range, you know, like between, you know, you can't launch your game versus you have to physically buy a USB security key to protect all of your passwords and everything on your PC because of the RCE and RAT exploits. So that's, that's the range, like the scope of what we're kind of talking about here. But despite having a much higher chance of being hacked, the people in the largest amount of danger are regular players. Most people who make COD content already know about these issues, play on console, or just play the newest titles grinding for their 500th Warzone win or something. No, the regular Andy who says to themselves, damn, I really want to play the old Call of Duty games, are the people who will suffer the most. Because they don't know a thing about what's going on right now, because Activision hasn't said a word, and they know this is currently happening. That's right. 
you can be hacked without too much difficulty on one, two, three, nine of their products on Steam right now, and they haven't made so much as a peep. Not even an acknowledgement. Not even a, we are working on fixing this, nothing. So Mr. Jimmy Duty, who wants to relive the days of a golden MP7 on Modern Warfare 3, will find himself the target of a rat sneaking into his computer, eating his cheese, chewing his cables, and he will be completely none the wiser. Right now, it's genuinely unsafe to be playing COD games on PC. It has been the case for a very long time now, and there has been no word from the company who made the game. So other people are stepping up to the plate. The chassis is all bent up. The drive shaft is all destroyed. And I don't know if you noticed, but you got a crack in your windshield. I can fix this. When there is a passionate community for a game, people will find a way. Even if you aren't a big Call of Duty person, a ton of us had at least one of these titles as our main childhood game. I'm 28. I grew up in the COD 4 to Black Ops 2 era for the most part. And I absolutely feel a strong sense of nostalgia for those games. When a company completely fails to keep their game alive, the players will find a way. They did it with Titanfall 2's North Star, and they're doing it here. A collaborative effort made by a few devs brings us the modded clients for these games. And there's quite a few of them actually. IW4X, IW6X, then X Labs, COD 4X, Plutonium, BO3 Client, also known as BOY, and the SM2. X Labs is a modded client that allows you to play multiple CODs online, such as Modern Warfare 2, Ghosts, and Advanced Warfare. Inside X Labs are the clients I mentioned earlier, such as IW4X and IW6. This allows for the ability to add server browsers to the games I mentioned above, and therefore massively reduces the exploit risk caused by peer-to-peer -peer connection. Xlabs has actually been one of the major players in keeping games like Modern Warfare 2 alive on PC. Many people, myself included, would go to a game shack, shout out Howie's Mission Viejo, rest in peace, and would boot up COD 4 in the late 2000s, which already had an inbuilt server browser. The above games did not, hence the security issues. COD 4X is less of a modded client and more of an unofficial community patch for the game. It's a patch done on the Steam version and many server browsers will have you download it to play on the COD 4X 21.1 patch instead of the Steam version, which is COD 4 1.8. There is also Plutonium, which appears to be the most popular of all of the modded clients, partly because it features a lot of the more popular Call of Duties, World at War, MW, W3 and Black Ops 1 and 2, but also providing lots of great security for players, not just from rat exploits, but also hackers in general, like the aimbotters or people seeing through walls. However, the real like meat of this is for players like me, the diehard Zombies fans. Each of these games not only provides a safe, secure way to play COD Zombies on PC in 2023 with your friends, but also mod the hell out of it. Custom weapons, custom animations, custom maps, you name it, it's safe and easily accessible. Lastly though, we have SM2, and this is way more than just a modded client. Originally, it started as a project to help consolidate a ton of the Modern Warfare games into one spot. This quickly spiraled into an extremely impressive program that utilized the Modern Warfare Remastered engine and became what looked like a totally new game. A passion project of multiple developers making what could honestly be described as the ultimate Modern Warfare title. Tons of guns, all the best maps, updated graphics, the whole shebang. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, the Master Chief Collection. Looking through a lot of their developer commentary and videos, it shows that the people making this are superbly talented. A lot of the Steam games, some of them like Modern Warfare 3 and uh, Black Ops 3 on Steam do have their own server browsers within the Steam version of the game, but no one really uses those. Those are kind of dead and they still like fall under the same kind of exploits on Steam. I know with the Black Ops 3 client, it's emulating the online service. I, I wish I knew how Momo and all the guys had did it at the time, but I really don't know how they make it happen, but they do. It's magic. I don't know. <laughs> For all the shit the world, and, and myself admittedly, give the Call of Duty community, there is something immensely pleasing seeing so many fan projects entirely dedicated to keeping our childhood games alive. To allow for us to play like we used to, but with just enough quality of life adjustments so it doesn't feel at odds with modern
modern gaming. Modern gaming that can be massively improved by the incorporation of a delicious drink that's zero calories, tastes amazing, and supports your boy Bricky. That's right, we're talking about Gamer Sups. Gamer Sups is a fan fantastic drink replacement. All kinds of flavors you want. You want something nice, simple, and sweet? Bam, it's there. You want something citrusy? Bam, it's there. How many calories? Zip. Are we talking supplemented with vitamins and minerals? I think it is. And oh, shaker cups of all kinds? Perhaps even 10% off your entire order, no matter what you buy, no matter where you buy it from, and I keep a percentage of your order, which supports me? I think so. Gamer Sups is incredible. I drink it practically every single day. I mix it with sparkling water, which makes it taste like fruit soda, except fruit soda with zero calories. Tastes amazing, is better for you, and uh, for a lot of people, actually, uh, once they quit soda, like, they drop, like, a bunch of weight because if you drink like three sodas a day, it's like 500 calories or something or close to it. And then because of that, you replace it with zero. Next thing you know, you're at a 500 calorie deficit every single day and you start losing weight. It's actually pretty insane. So yeah, gamer subs, 10% off code bricky link in the description. It's quality. It's amazing. I love it. I hawk it all the time because it supports me and I genuinely enjoy the product because gamer subs makes sure their products stay quality and they respect the hard work of us creators that put in the work for them hard work activision doesn't approve of Stop! Stop! He's already dead. today we have received a cease and desist letter on behalf of activision publishing in relation to the x labs project we are complying with this order and shutting down all operations permanently thank you all for your support over the years x labs allowing you to safely play games currently for sale on Steam was shut down on May 22nd of 2023. While some people who still had it downloaded could find ways to work around the cease and desist, for the most part, Modern Warfare 2, Ghosts, and Advanced Warfare were now registered and relegated to being played on the Steam launcher, opening those who play it to exploits and security concerns. On the exact same day, the developers of SM2 and their fantastic looking title suffered the exact same Fate. We have received a cease and desist letter on behalf of Activision Publishing in relation to the X Labs project. Because of that, we are also going to shut down. Boy! Thank you all for your support. Something I didn't mention before is that SM2 was also the people making a client for Black Ops 3, hence the BO3 part of their tweet. Activision clearly saw these projects as hurting their bottom line, and when there was the Slightest whiff of money loss, regardless of the game's age or security, they will step in every single time. But what about the other two modded clients, COD 4X and Plutonium? Well, COD 4X isn't really one of the major mod clients. Call of Duty 4 has a server browser already. This is just a various version of that server browser. You still need to own COD 4 on Steam, and there isn't any DLC that needs to be purchased. As far as we're all concerned, COD 4X is an unofficial patch, and you can play it now. Plutonium is still up and running, however. There is a pervasive theory that the reason these projects were shut down was not because of the modded client itself, but rather due to the microtransactions part of their game. So Call of Duty and microtransactions are, are hand in hand these days. While they may not have loot boxes anymore like Advanced Warfare popularized, they will still have an obscene amount of microtransactions in their game. In 2022, Activision Blizzard made 5.89 <coughs> billion dollars for microtransactions, DLC content, and subscriptions. In a single year, almost six billion dollars was made by this company entirely from the purchasing of skins, charms, battle passes, and everything else. See, the X-Lab client ran MW2, Ghosts, and Advanced Warfare. For MW2 and Ghosts, there were no issues. These games had some map packs, and that's where it ended. Advanced Warfare, started the loot box trend. And playing Advanced Warfare on X-Labs gave you every single item in those boxes. The SM2 guys were working on a client for Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3 also has loot boxes. You seeing a trend here? Plutonium, however, has World at War, Black Ops 1 and 2, as well as Modern Warfare 3. Four games that do not feature mainline microtransactions in their games. Just DLC content in the form of map packs. Except for Black Ops 2. While they didn't have loot boxes, they did have purchasable customization options for the game. However, 
This doesn't appear to be causing an issue, as only two days after SM2 and Xlabs received their seasoned assist, Plutonium added verification software to their client, meaning you had to own the games on Steam if you wanted to play them via their client, and torrent versions would no longer work. Which leads us to this fork in the road. I'm not sure if it was the microtransaction bottom line, or if it was the possibility that you could use a torrent copy of these games to play on Xlabs and the BO3 client. But regardless, Plutonium has not been hit by a cease and desist and remains active to this day. It's difficult to determine which it is, but one thing that puts credence into the microtransaction camp is that none of the games after this time period have found their way into these modded clients. Infinite Warfare, World War II, and Black Ops 4 have all not been touched whatsoever. There's reason to believe that this is because these games lack popularity, I say as I shed a tear, but all these games were knee-deep in the new microtransaction business model that Activision has continued pushing to this day. Also, these modded clients normally are there for the extra security as well. As the Call of Duty games have continued on, they have become more secure and more resilient to hacking and exploit attempts. Technology increases with time, which means the security of games gets better, but so do the hackers, which is why ones left in the dust on Steam are so much more ripe for the rat picking. This is reinforced by the fact that Modern Warfare 2019 had dedicated servers as well as crossplay, making it much more difficult to exploit these games. Not to mention the very obvious interest Activision has in keeping their most recent titles functional and out of nefarious hands. The recent stuff makes the most money. So all of the recent CODs don't have any major modded clients because they are luckily devoid of hackers. Recently, it was reported that Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War had been infected with exploits that allowed people to gain access to your IP address, crash your game, and much more. As such, players were advised to avoid playing the game. Now, if you spent much time in Warzone, you'll be familiar with hackers. Warzone especially has been brought down by a plethora of aim hacks, map hacks, and other in-game issues before. However, Black Ops Cold War, released in 2020, has just become the next casualty to be brought down by the same exploits as previous titles. This exploit involved was basically identical to the previous ones, all with the exact same bells and whistles. The overall ability to rat someone to do remote code execution wasn't quite as prevalent, but they could still screw with you, kick you from the game, lag your lobby, all that stuff. However, because Cold War is a relatively recent game that still gains a sizable chunk of money for Activision, this was patched a few weeks later and was the only time I have ever seen them acknowledge these issues whatsoever. But if you've been a Keen listener, you're probably thinking to yourself, wait, you said peer-to-peer -peer connection was a big reason for the exploit issues. Doesn't Cold War have dedicated servers? It came out in 2020, the year after Modern Warfare did. You'd be correct. This was the start of an absolute rabbit hole of insanity, full of concepts I don't understand in the slightest, but will do my best to explain to you now. Call of Duty runs on a modified version of the Quake 3 engine made most likely before you were born. Specifically, Call of Duty 4 runs on the IW3 engine, IW most likely standing for its development, Developer, Infinity War. ID Tech 3 was the original Quake 3 engine. This, in a sense, could be referred to as IW1, even though it wasn't Infinity War who made it. IW2 was a modified version of that engine made for Call of Duty 2 in 2005. The engine was modified an additional time for COD 4, and that was IW3. If you're following along, then you can piece together that IW4 was Modern Warfare 2, IW5 was MW3, 6 was Ghosts, and so on and so forth, until you reach IW8 and 9. IW8 was a massive rehaul done by Infinity Ward's Poland studio for Modern Warfare 2019. This remake took approximately five whole years and featured a substantial suite of upgrades to the original versions, which is one of the reasons why the 2019 Call of Duty looked and played so drastically different than its predecessors. IW8 was the mark of a whole new engine for COD. However, we're only talking about the Infinity War engine. There are two other major players here, Treyarch and Sledgehammer. Treyarch often used a heavily modified version of the IW engine called the T-Engine with a similar numerical value.
value, T3, T4, all the way up. This is actually a major reason why, despite them all technically using a similar engine, Infinity Ward games had always felt different than Treyarch ones and vice versa. There was a gameplay feel to them, and only people who have played through the entire plethora of games will know that there was that different feeling between an Infinity Ward and a Treyarch game. Sledgehammer simply had the Sledgehammer Games engine, which would be present in Advanced Warfare, MW Remastered, and World War II. The thing is, Black Ops Cold War did not run on the IW8 engine, the one that was massively revamped and rebuilt for Modern Warfare 2019. It ran primarily on the T9 engine, the one that was a modified version of T8 for Black Ops 4 and T7 for Black Ops 3. And in speaking to people for this video, I was given a clip of the hacker himself stating, and I quote, he's able to hack this person and kick them out of their lobby because it was the same exploit, same problem that is present all the way back from Black Ops 3 and then proceeding to kick them using just their COD ID and IP address. And I think that to me was kind of like where all the pieces really started to like kind of come together because I had known that Call of Duty started off a modified version of the Quake 3 engine with COD 4. They took that, made IW3, which is the engine name for Call of Duty 4. Treyarch took that and made World at War, turned that into T4, and then past that point, they kind of branched off and still built off of those exact same engines for their new games going forward. That's why it always felt like Infinity Ward games felt a little different compared to the Treyarch games. With like the whole Cold War thing that's been going on and what he said in that where it was like, yeah, this is the same exploit that, that they hadn't fixed. It made a lot of sense that this is something that is so far deep into the code of the old engines that I don't know what more they can do than go back and put band-aids on it. So we come to a new realization. Peer-to-peer -peer connection is a problem for the old COD games. It makes it significantly easier to exploit, far easier to get your information, and overall allows hackers to just run rampant at an unchecked rate. But this particular exploit appears to be mainly due to the extremely old engine that Call of Duty used to run on, and a security flaw that is present on every single one of them that can be taken advantage of. Obviously, the old games do not have great security whatsoever. Modern Warfare 2 on release had a plague of hackers in it. 10th Prestige lobbies, Infinite AC-130s, all that crap. It was already a nightmare made by its hardware, but that hardware is almost 15 years old now, and the fact that it was still being modified and used for Cold War is one, insanity, two, gives me so much sympathy for the developers, and three, evidence that the decaying software is one of the main reasons for these issues. Modern Warfare 2019 had plenty of hackers, but I don't remember it having this kind of hacker, the kick you out of the game hacker, the rat Hacker. And there's good reason to believe that it's because of the massively overhauled IW8 engine created for it, which actually sparks some good news. Sledgehammer Games did not use the old T9 engine for Call of Duty Vanguard. Now, I have my thoughts on Vanguard, but from what I've researched, it also didn't have the rat issue, as it was not run on Sledgehammer's own engine but rather the same IW8 engine that Modern Warfare 2019 did. Following this, Modern Warfare 2, 2, 2022 was made on the IW9 engine, the current engine for Call of Duty and an improved on version of the newly made IW8. Activision has said that all CODs starting this year, 2023, will be on the IW9 engine and there will be no longer a specific engine for different developing companies. It will all be IW9 code developed by three studios. Why do this now? <laughs> it's because of Warzone. It's because of Warzone. Warzone is their gigantic moneymaker right now. And considering that each COD game adds more to Warzone, it makes a good bit of sense that it's all going to be on the exact same engine now. This will most likely remove the feel that different studio Call of Duties had, but will possibly improve the product in the future. And I know that's super wishful thinking, acting like Activision isn't basically running a sweatshop these days, but I cannot imagine the headache caused by the constant swapping and updating of these engines between the various studios. Having one thing all synced up is probably a huge relief for a lot of people. Some of those people 
being you. If truly the old engine used for Cold War and going all the way back to motherfucking Quake 3, if truly that engine that was taken apart and rebuilt countless times like some Frankenstein's monster, if that was the reason for these exploits, then thank God it's gone and going forward, unless something new is developed by these people, we should most likely be okay. However, that leaves the full priced elephant in the room. Hello. I like money. What inspired you to build a second Krusty Krab right next door to the original? Money. Being happy that the new CODs going forward may be free of the security flaw is not a bad thing, but it does keep us away from the original point of this video. That COD Infinite Warfare is massively underrated and cannot be played whatsoever, along with 10 other titles that can also not be played without risking massive security issues on PC. What is almost more of a crime than this is that these games are still currently for sale at almost full price, or at least a price significantly higher than it should be. COD 4, $20. World at War, MW2, $20. Black Ops 1, $30. Black Ops 2, $60 fucking dollars. Black Ops 2 came out in 2012. It is listed for sale without any DLC for 60 Dollars! COD Ghost, Infinite Warfare, Black Ops 3, World War II, Advanced Warfare, all of these are 60 fucking dollars without any DLC. It's a crime. It's daylight robbery personified. These are, I remind you, completely unsafe games to play. And some of them don't play at all. If you go to the Steam page of Infinite Warfare, you will see all of the wondrous tags for the game. Yes, single player, online PVP, online co-op. You will also see in the description of the game an advertisement for the multiplayer that does not work and has not worked for over a year now. It makes you wonder, at what point does this become false advertisement? And at what point does Steam itself need to take accountability for the game on their platform? This is not a semantical argument anymore. Die-hard players understand the need for all of these modded clients for their games, but the dad gamer, the one who just wants to relive these games, has no idea what he's getting into. And if he happens to be one of the tiny fraction of players who wants to play Infinite Warfare multiplayer, the Steam page is lying to his face. There is no online PVP, it does not work. And it has not for over a year now. Okay, I have to stop this right now and discuss this because the craziest thing happened while we were editing this video. That opening montage of Infinite Warfare gameplay was actually filmed after this video was filmed. After about two hours of playing, not in the multiplayer, mind you, of the PC version of Infinite Warfare, no, in a custom game on Infinite Warfare, after we finished playing, one of the Discord members looked to his PC after leaving the room and saw the mouse moving on its own. After rushing to turn it all off and everything like that, every single one of us downloaded a various antivirus software, ran tons of scans to make sure none of us had any kinds of Trojans or other possible issues. But the simple fact, the simple possibility that one of the people I played with in a custom log Hobby of Infinite Warfare might have gotten ratted while filming footage of Infinite Warfare for the video about rats. You, you, you can't make this shit up. You absolutely cannot. The other games in this series also can have the argument that there's no PvP either due to the immense amount of hacking issues, which Steam appears to have agreed with. Because guess what? Online PvP has been removed from their tags. Check it out. Every single COD game from Call of Duty 4 all the way to Black Ops 3, right before Infinite Warfare, the online PvB tag has been removed. I don't know why they have done this. It could be the fact that these games are old and you might not get into a game even if you wanted to brave the exploits. Or it could be because they know what's going on and they're trying to save face for any possible legal repercussions. The second one's a bit of a stretch. I know it, it's James and the Giant Reach, especially considering that they still advertise multiplayer in the description of every single game. But it also makes even less sense as the only one with PvP still tagged on it is unplayable regardless of the hacking issue. Gabe Newell is an interesting guy. And while it's hard for me to ever put full faith into a massive corporation, even one like Steam, he does seem like he has his hand on the pulse of the 
gaming world in general. He's got his hand on a gamer. The Steam Deck's massive success, I think, helps warrant this opinion. Steam has been rather generous when it comes to issuing refunds for horrendously broken titles. While you are issued an automatic refund in under 14 days or two hours of playtime, but you can still request a refund for products regardless of these restraints. And I think it is completely within the consumer's right to state that you bought this game within the last one to two years thinking you could play the multiplayer that was advertised. You then found out you were putting yourself at risk of having your system hacked and identity compromised, or it just genuinely didn't work. It is in your right to ask for a refund. You purchased something with the intention of playing what it advertised and you cannot do so safely. Nothing is being done about this. Nothing is being said about this. You're charged full price for a decade old game and told to eat shit. I looked up the legality of this stuff. Now, I'm not a lawyer and my understanding of everything outside of bird law is pretty horrid, but I wanted to look into false advertising and willful negligence. From my short Googling, I read that you need three main things to claim false advertising. The business or defendant knowingly or recklessly misrepresenting an objective fact. Two, in reliance of the misrepresentation or omission, products or services were purchased, and three, actual financial harm was suffered as a consequence of false advertising. I think the hardest part you'll have to prove will be that final one, financial harm. In a sense, one could argue in a court that you still receive what you asked to purchase. However, with the caveat of security issues. That said, part one is also a bit fickle, as Activision clearly knows this is a problem considering how quickly they fixed Cold War. But to state they recklessly misrepresented an objective fact is a really difficult thing to prove. For willful negligence from this Forbes article I read, it seems more cut and dry, but it's all about proving it. Willful negligence, also known as reckless or wanton negligence, describes negligent acts where the defendant disregards the risks of their actions and is aware, or should be aware, of the possible impacts. Defendants in these cases are often deliberately dismissive of other person's safety, health, or welfare. Activision is clearly in the know of this problem. It appears that Steam is even possibly in the know of this problem, yet continue to sell these games at full price while simultaneously shutting down safe methods to play the products customers have purchased. And from here, I was kind of cut and dry with the rest of the script. In fact, the whole rest of the script was a lot of yelling about Bobby Kotick and talking about EA and Titanfall 1, but then I discovered a few things in one of my interviews. So I have, uh, I've got the original Modern oh. Warfare 2 right oh, here. my heart. I'm not sure if you've read the back of these games, but Basically, every COD game has this. It says, Activision makes no guarantees regarding the availability of online play and may withdraw online service in its discretion without notice. There's a chance that what you're seeing on that Steam page, and I hope it isn't the case, but it could be what we can also read on the back of the copies of the games, is that I do think the worst case scenario is that they would shut down online services. I did not know see this part on the back of the box. I had no clue. That's actually shocking. I Nowadays, we're seeing live services like just go to death so often. Original um, Halo. Yeah? Yeah, I don't think anyone wants the multiplayer to just go poof. Just go. I don't, I don't think anyone really wants that. They are definitely aware of what's going on with their games. Now, maybe not as much as us, because at least for people who are super into Call of Duty, right? We know the ins and outs. We know what's going on. And that's why there even are modded clients and there are projects like this, is because you have a very passionate fan base that just loves Call of Duty, right? I do think that instead of just pulling the services, I think it would be nice if there was at least some kind of disclaimer saying like the matchmaking pool is small for this game and you might not be able to find a match or make mention that there's ongoing security issues and that they're looking into it. I think that, at a minimum, would be nice. So in the finest of print, in the back of the box, there is the statement and situation that they don't guarantee online play at all. What happens if we, we yell and, and, and push against Activision like this? What happens when we tell them, fix this thing right now, this is willful negligence, this is false advertising, this might have legal ramifications? I think that already happened once, and it was with Titanfall 1 and Electronic Arts. Titanfall 1 was basically an unplayable game, and without any kind of single player campaign, being only multiplayer, they pulled it entirely from stores. You can't buy Titanfall 1 anymore. And like most only online multiplayer video games, it basically means it'll pretty much fade into the end of time. 
unless it gets its own North Star. If Activision pulls these games from Steam, all of them, because they're not making them any money for one, but also because possible threats of legality and all that, this is a worse situation than we were in in the beginning. There's this line you have to push where we're stuck here in the middle Something needs to be done. But if you push so hard on the something needs to be done, it goes one of two ways. It gets fixed or it gets pulled. Pushing it too far into the getting fixed category might just get it pulled. And at that point, I think it's almost the worst thing that it just gets completely removed from Steam. It feels like it's basically a crime that it's sold for what it is at the moment. Something needs to change. But having people go back and fix the coding for 10 games, fix the engine to make it so people can't do this anymore, is not something Activision does. They fired a huge number of QA people to save money. That's where all the ideas came from, and, and then th then all kinds of things got confusing. Going forward, especially with the uh, the Microsoft acquisition, you know, Microsoft, they've, they've been through the ringer before with Halo MCC, so they they know the positive outcome that it's had. They also know the struggles that they had to go through to make it actually work. I remember over the buying many, it oh. many years. I remember buying um, it day one and being real angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With that experience, that could either lead them to being like, we we don't think this would work for Call of Duty, or maybe they could see it as a challenge and be like, well, we already have done this. And maybe it could be one of those situations where at some point, they could just fully remaster them and package them into one thing where all they have to do is maintain this one project. We could just get to a point where there's just essentially the portal to go play everything. And that's the only thing that then has to be maintained because that could make things a lot easier for them. But that is, uh, I, I think, very wishful thinking. And again, it, it ties into what is their focus? What do they see the future of Call of Duty like? There is a gigantic asterisk in the air right now, a huge maybe swirling above our heads, and that is the Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard. It's gone through now for the most part. And the concept, the, the best possible solution is that these things are pulled because they have the Modern Warfare Master Chief Collection. MCC did not launch well, but right now it might be one of the best dollar for game deals in the entire Steam market. All those Halo games for that price, it is a steal. And hoping for that is a bit wishful and probably won't happen for a couple of years, but it would be nice. Even if this acquisition is going to make Bobby Sausage Fingers Kodak a richer man. Hey, I'm not a lawyer, okay? Activision has lawyers that would trounce all over these accusations, most likely. Willful or gross negligence, false advertising, the whole thing. I, I hope you hear me. Activision, I am not claiming you have done any of these things. I would never imply that you broke the law or anything. I, I would never imply these things. However, I can say that Activision CEO allegedly threatened to have his assistant killed. I can also say that Activision has allegedly received more than 500 HR complaints from current and former employees alleging harassment, sexual assault, bullying, pay disparities, and other issues. And funniest of all, I can state that this is not alleged at all, but a fact that Bobby Kotick has complained that he can't do well in his dating life as the first picture that comes up is him as the devil. This is actually a fact. He cannot get a date because you keep photoshopping him as the devil. God is real. Hey, okay, listen, I've asked you guys for a lot of things in my time, okay? I've asked you to subscribe. I've asked you to go check out the Twitch stream. I've asked you to buy merchandise, you know, TBG, thick, thick brick gaming, man. I've asked you to do a lot of things, but if you don't listen to any of that, that's totally fine. You do you, but please, for the love of God, if you can do anything else for me, don't stop photoshopping him as the devil. <laughs>At the time of writing this script, Activision officially made a tweet. Multiplayer for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2009 on Steam was brought offline while we investigate reports of an issue. This was the first time I've seen them actually acknowledge any issues for the prior COD titles on Steam. However, it wasn't given any specific annotations, just reports of an issue. Later on, it was revealed that this was a brand new exploit and hack for Modern Warfare 2 2009, where people could spread malware by simply being in the same lobby 
as other people. It's gotten that bad. As for all the other games, however, I would highly recommend using Plutonium while you can. It's got a very dedicated developer group, it plays extremely well, and it might not be around for much longer. Who knows at this point? I'm sure many of you will and have found ways to preserve these titles for the future. Things like this remind us all that video games are becoming products of the here and now. The only games that will stand the test of time are single player story games. The inevitability of a live service title is death. When the servers are eventually shut down and all the money you put into COD Warzone, Apex Legends, and everything in between ends up meaning squat. It also shows that when it comes down to it and the decision is either player security or the bottom line, the these types of companies will choose the dollar every single time. Activision knows about this. They do. And I know that the developers of the games are horrified and extremely just, just simply upset seeing all of the games they worked on be completely exploited without any ability to change it. But until they're told to fix it, that's where we're at. Don't buy COD on PC. I'd say don't buy COD in general, but I know how that is. Even I buy the game still, but I get to pretend to justify it because I'm making a video. For a lot of people, these games are their social hour, just like they were for me years ago. I, 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 didn't, I didn't talk about class with friends in person. I talked about class over domination on Terminal. I talked about girls during Team Deathmatch on Hijack, and I bitched about my teachers on Summit playing Search and Destroy. These memories are why these fan clients existed. These people, keeping these games alive to remind us of how we survived the second largest recession in American history, and it's still going. People buy COD nowadays to do what I did as a kid. You wanna know why Fortnite was so insanely popular? Besides a lot of the game stuff, it's because Fortnite is this generation's COD 4. It's this generation's MW2. It's what all of them do when they get home from school to talk with their friends. It's unfortunate that the product though, is so much more inferior and so sleazy nowadays. But it is what it is. So while I want you to not buy COD, I understand reality. So at least do me this favor and don't fucking buy it on PC. And keep drawing Bobby as the devil.